Tula, the great metropolis of the central plain of Mexico, has been associated with the Toltec culture. The Toltecs were originally from the vast northern region of Mexico in what was probably the most significant migration of this period. Tula became famous not only because of its artistic legacy, synthesized in these hieratic sculptures of warriors, but also due to Seacatl Topiltzin Quetzalcoatl, the commanding hero, the god and symbol. Persecuted by the lords of Tezcatlipoca, who practiced human sacrifices, Quetzalcoatl was forced to flee from Tula, but swore that he would return on the date known as Seacatl to Sugarcane. His oath acquired the tones of a prophecy, for on that same date, the Spaniards would land on Mexican soil. Quetzalcoatl would become the central myth of all Mesoamerican cultures. Another of the groups that had influence on Tula was the Huastecos, who spoke a Mayan tongue and whose original territory spanned the north of Veracruz and the south of Tamaulipas. Their god, Ejecatl, the god of the wind, would be blended as one of the manifestations of the figure of Quetzalcoatl. All this expresses the relations of the Huasteca with the central plain of Mexico. The magnificent relief at Tepetzintla and the sculpture known as the Adolescent, masterpieces of pre-Hispanic art, were made during this time and constitute an exaltation of the cosmogonic order created by Quetzalcoatl. The contacts between the different cultures of the Central Plain and the people of the southeastern region intensified during this period. Chichen Itza, center of the Mayan culture, became one of the predominating sites of the Yucatan Peninsula. The religious similarities between Tula and Chichen Itza were particularly manifest in their symbolic creations and in the Temple of the Warriors, where the image of Kukul Khan, frozen in stone as he emerges from the mouth of a plumed serpent, remains as an emblem of war and sacrifice. Within these great surroundings, the pilasters have been carved with serpents and whirling feathers, as well as with warriors that in the same manner as Quetzalcoatl Kukulcan battled against the forces of the night in order to allow the sun to return from its voyage to the underworld. The enigmatic figure of Chacmol is found both in Mayan cities as well as throughout the rest of Mesoamerica. Although his form makes him appear as if he were a carrier of offerings or prayers and pledges, various specialists have tried to interpret his significance some associating him with the cult of the god Quetzalcoatl Kukulcan, as if he were a warrior offering his own blood. Others have associated Chacmol with fertility, rain and maize. The pyramid of Kukulcan is an immense observatory that with the rays of the sun marks the passage of the vernal as well as the autumn equinox. On those dates, Kukulcan Quetzalcoatl is sketched along the pyramid descending in the form of a great serpent in a fascinating combination of lights and shadows. This pyramid is also a calendar for its 18 platforms correspond with the months of the pre-Hispanic year. The 364 steps on the staircase added to the upper platform complete the days of the annual solar count. All this reveals the great knowledge that the Maya had achieved concerning the movement of the stars and the scientific rigor with which they designed their constructions. Within the first temple, which was later covered by a pyramid, Chak Mol was discovered with several offerings on top of his figure. It lay below a painting of a red jaguar with jade inlays. There are significant parallels between the ritual architecture of Tula and Chichen Itza. The practice of human sacrifices in Tula was symbolically represented in the reliefs which depict eagles that are devouring hearts. 
This reveals the Mayan vocation for warfare. The same occurs in Chichen Itza, where eagles and jaguars make reference to the warriors that would capture prisoners that were offered in sacrifice to the sun. A notable symbolic element of this period is the Coatepantli, or structure of serpents, which appears for the first time in Tula. One of its functions was to separate man's surroundings from the sacred spaces reserved for the gods. This tradition in constructions is also found in sites such as Tenayuca in the state of Mexico, where an impressive belt of serpents surrounds the pyramid. In this Coatepantli, each section of the wall was conformed by 52 heads that corresponded with the 52 years of the Mexica century. Once again, the conscientious urge to signal the passage of time becomes a major architectural work. A center of civilization was established in Paquimé, Chihuahua, to the north of Mexico during the post-classical period. This silent metropolis amidst the desert with its uncommon architecture made with dirt and clay, was developed just as Tulum in Quintana Roo arose as an enigmatic watchtower from where the Maya embraced the Caribbean Sea. The late post-classical period began with the migration of different peoples, among which the Mistek stood above the rest. Towards the 12th century, the Mistek invaded the valleys of Oaxaca that had been settled by the Zapotec. They shared with them the tombs of Monte Alban and left there a magnificent gold offering that was discovered in tomb number seven by Alfonso Caso in 1932. At the same time, the mystic continued to carry out in Mitla the ancestral cult of the lords and masters of the dead, or Mictlan, from which this site acquired its name. Its architectural concepts are very different from those found in the spaces, shapes, and construction techniques of Monte Alban. The only remains of Zapotec art that were preserved were panels adapted by the Mistec as frames for their own panels and inlaid with finely carved stones. With them, they formed multiple versions of scaled frets, which symbolized the serpent. They were the last to arrive. The Aztecs uh, followed a long pilgrimage from the north, from the mythic land of Aztlan, following the prophecy of their high priest, Tenoch. Travel south towards a place where you will find an eagle devouring a serpent on top of a cactus on a lake, and there found your capital city, Tenochtitlan which they did in 1325, but always with this sentiment of being the latecomers, the late arrivals to the Central Valley of Mexico, and uh, trying enormously to become, uh, let us say, the heirs to the most powerful cultural influence of Central Mexico, that of the Toltecs, who had created the greatest urban center of Central Mexico, Teotihuacan, and who had uh, united all the knowledge of their times in the corpus known as the Toltecayotl. The god of the uh, Toltecs was Quetzalcoatl, the plume serpent, the kindly god of agriculture and education. 